So we have this very interesting experience during the 1990s up until 2002, and of course, since then, um, we've had a somewhat different experience. And leading up to the events of the past month or so where we had an agreement with North Korea, the so-called leap year agreement, and now um, that's collapsed. And so there are a number of different issues that this raises. First of all, um, you know, obviously the past experience is different from the current experience, and I'm, I'm wondering on your take on that. And secondly, of course, I'm very interested in your views on the recent developments. Well, I think past experience was quite different from recent experience, and in some ways, that's, I think, a reflection of a change in the general context within which all of this is occurring. Uh, when I mentioned earlier that I'd been to North Korea in January of 2009, I came back to New York to be asked by Secretary Clinton, as I got off the plane, literally, uh, whether I would do come back and be a special representative for North Korea policy. Uh, and the expectation in Washington, at least in some quarters then, as the Bush administration exited, uh, was that basically a lot had been done. That It was almost only a question of figuring out how to tie down these last few issues and then go collect the plutonium. You mean uh, in the six party talks? Within the six party talks that China's involvement had been uh, made a major difference, that uh, North Korea was uh, constructively engaged in the six-party talks, et cetera, et cetera. Well, but when I had been in Pyongyang, uh, there had been speculation in the press outside before I went in that the North Koreans were preparing to test another long-range missile. And this subject came up in the conversations that we had with Kim ki Wan and others in North Korea. And I specifically said that were they to do that, I thought it would be a very severe blow to prospects for progress in the six-party talks, because it would, it would be a very inauspicious way, to say the least, uh, to start a relationship with the new U.S. administration an administration which, even though I was not then working for them, I stressed, I thought, was on the whole disposed to be uh, constructive in its engagement with the North. Uh, they told me, Kim ki Kwan told me very explicitly, he said, that's not my decision, that's not, that's a military question, and I have no control over it. Um, well, as it turned out, they did it, and that started a kind of rolling descent into uh, negotiating no, no man's land that was followed by the nuclear test, et cetera. I think there were various times over the last couple of years when we seemed to be sort of on the verge of again launching a, cons a potentially constructive negotiating process. Uh, I went to North Korea in December of 09. We had generally good conversations. We identified a couple of major issues that required resolution before we could re-engage and, and go back to the six-party process. Those had to do with sanctions and some other things. But by early March of 2010, we were preparing to invite the North Koreans to come to New York and to continue the conversations that we'd had in Pyongyang. And I remember vividly, we were literally on the verge in the next day or two of sending a message through the New York Channel suggesting that they go in and pick up their visas in, in Beijing. And we got word that the Chonan had been sunk. Well, that, of course, threw everything into a cocktail for the next several months. Uh, and nonetheless, by the end of 2010, uh, we were once again at the point of sort of leaning forward and trying to figure out how we could get back to the table. And that's when I was flying from 
Japan to Beijing and flew over those tiny little islands in the Western Sea uh, to land in Beijing to be greeted by someone from the U.S. Embassy to say, you won't believe what just happened uh, or what's happening. The North Koreans are shelling uh, this island. Well, that, to say the least, uh, put another uh, through the whole thing back into uh, a cocktail once more. So by uh, in 2011, the food aid question began to arise. And we again, I mean, it's a little bit like Charlie Brown and Lucy in the football. We got it all geared up again. And I met with uh, Kim Gae Wan in, in July in New York. And then subsequently, after I decided to step down as special representative, we met again in Geneva. And Glenn Davies, who was my successor, uh, accompanied us on that trip. Uh, and, you know, we were hearing all the right things. It was very clear what we expected in terms of moratoria, and it was clear what they, they expected. So I was not at all surprised when, in February, uh, we and they uh, concluded the so-called Leap Day, or whatever it is, uh, agreement. Uh, and I assume that they understood very well that we couldn't have another replay of the missile launch of 2009, which also they had described as a satellite launch. Uh, and here we are. They've said they're going to do it again. Now, I, I don't think that this is just an exercise in diplomatic uh, nonsense. I think that this probably reflects a view on their part that what they really want is to have serious discussions with us and others, but in the context of their being an established nuclear weapons state. And uh, I think it's, that's going to be very difficult for, for, to pull off. So I don't quite know where we go from here. I'm, I think it's, it's sad in many ways, but um, I think there was a genuine willingness on the part of the Obama administration and uh, the, uh, the other parties in the six-party process to re-engage. Now, there, were, there have been big changes in the last decade. China's role in all of this is enormous. And when we were at Cato, I would go back and forth to Northeast Asia all the time. I went, in those three years, I went to Beijing once and met with uh, an assistant uh, vice minister in Beijing who had some interest in what we were doing, but it was clear Beijing did not want to get involved in the agreed framework process, not at all. And we would go for months without ever really thinking about what China wanted. No, that's not any longer true. That has had a secondary effect, which is as Japan's problems have exacerbated, been exacerbated and deepened, and China's rise has continued. Our relationship with South Korea has become, from a strategic point of view, even more important than it was in the late 1990s. So that means to me that South Korea's voice in all of this is much stronger and much more listened to than it was at the time of the, agree uh, the negotiation, uh, negotiation of the agreed framework. So South Korea is now a principal central player in a way that they weren't in the 90s. And they've gone through a political evolution in which having tried Kim Dae-jung's approach and having tried No Mo Hyun's approach, uh, the progressive forces were in charge. They were trying to engage. Now, you can say they made mistakes, and they probably did, but they, by and large, at that time, had public support. And then we had the election of, of 2008, and the conservative forces regained control. And they are naturally much more skeptical, to say the least, of North Korea's intentions than were their predecessors. So we're operating in an entirely different political environment. And I think, uh, you know, uh, 
we should bear in mind that the people who have really screwed this up are the North Koreans, because they had their chance, and they have not yet been able to take, take advantage of it. Where we go from here, I don't know. I wanted to, to uh, quote something back to you. Yes. It's actually something you said in an interview uh, on 38 North, as a matter yeah. of fact. Yes. You'll recall. Um, and you said... With that guy, James Church, I think. Guy, uh, he said, my view, this is what you said. Yeah. My view is that engagement is an attempt to make the other party adjust its perceptions and behavior. In the process, we may find that we have to adjust our own. You still think that's true? Or? Yes, I do. Yeah. Yeah. And how might we have to adjust our own? Uh, I think moving forward, I want to be careful of how I phrase this. Not that I have any uh, aspirations for more government involvement. <laughs> but I think moving forward, we're going to have to figure out ways to recognize that while our principal interest with North Korea is their nuclear weapons program, or at least that's our pronounced principal interest, mm -hmm. that we're going to have to deal with a lot of the other aspects of the North Korean situation in order to get any leverage uh, on the nuclear issue. Uh, because even if we were to solve the nuclear issue, which I don't think we can under current circumstances, we would still be left with a a North Korea which is essentially a failed state, a failed state right at the center of Northeast Asia, which is vitally important, not just to us, but to the world. And somehow you've got to come to grips with that. You've got to do, I think, go back to the September 2005 agreement. Remember, denuclearization was one of four principal goals. And I think we've got to figure out ways to move forward on all four of those tracks if we're going to make any sustained progress on denuclearization. We have to come to grips with the political reality on the Korean Peninsula, um, the need for a more stable arrangement like a peace treaty, recognizing how enormously difficult that's going to be. We have to come to grips with the question of the North Korean economy, recognizing how difficult that's going to be. Uh, and we have to come to grips with the issue of uh, diplomatic recognition and relations among all of the parties concerned. Now, my big question is whether the American foreign policy process uh, is capable of dealing with all those things because of the nature of our government, the nature of how we formulate policy and implement policy. Uh, you know, when we've made progress with North Korea, I would say in the years following the agreed framework, in the years uh, from 2004 to 2007, uh, it's, it, it has happened despite amazing opposition within America, the American establishment to what whatever the administration was, was trying to do. Um, I don't think that we're going to be able to have that degree of, or that lack of consensus if we're going to make progress on these things going forward, which kind of leaves me in a position of throwing up my hands.